Save 10% with my code BOBBY10 on raw, organic, grass-fed and grass-finished freeze-dried organ meats from Grassland Nutrition. Link in the description box. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, today a more relaxed video, something laid back. We're gonna check out the channel Just Pearly Things with their video. There is a lot to learn from this woman. As you can see on the thumbnail, it claims that this is the woman that every man needs. All right, we're gonna see about that. With no further ado, let's have a look. Um, what about you? What, what kind of wife were you and what type of wife would you like to be? Um, so, so she's divorced? I was a confused wife, um, a masculine wife, uh, a wife who... So for context, I'm the eldest. Sorry, I just, I just want to... Yeah, I want to interrupt right there. I like that she said that she was a masculine wife, and this is really the problem nowadays. Growing up in Germany, I saw it all over the place. The women were more masculine, and the men were effeminate. They were soy boys, if you will. It was absolutely repulsive to see, because those families bred very, very weak children. If you look into the dynamic of a dominant manly mother and a weak father, it creates pathetic children children because they see the father as a loser and not somebody that is a role model for them. So therefore they shy away from becoming like the father, but at the same time they are afraid of the mother and that fear ultimately transforms them into the father. They become weak men and then they seek yet again a masculine woman. I want to hear you about your day to day. Because I know that you're going to be struggling with what you're going to say about your husband. That's why I can yeah. see you're picking and choosing. I want, I want so I just wanted to let you flow with yeah. what your day-to-day -day life was like right. then and what your day yeah. and what you'd like it to be like. Because I know that you're going that mm -hmm. respect to respect thing. Yeah. So I'd rather you... I would like to understand if she's divorced now or not. Just think rather than put yourself in it, I'd rather you just say like, what did you do? Like get up in the morning because you said you're doing everything. So yeah. just tell us your day-to-day -day as, as you were. Yeah. So... Pre-baby, I mean, I think we had uh, six months of marriage before I got pregnant. And then obviously nine months, so, you know, just over a year of just us. Yeah. And it, it was okay. Did the you baby... wake up in the morning? No, before, do you wake oh, up in I the mean, morning? I mean, I've always worked. So ever since I turned 16, you get your NI number. Mm. I've always worked and I've studied and then I went into my career. So it was always... A yeah, that explains why she was masculine, of course, because women that always work, always have their own money and then even pursue a more advanced career through studying, those women have become men. Absolutely. They are not reliant upon a man. Therefore, they have no need to be feminine and end up masculine. Wake up at 6 a.m., um, work out, um, shower. Even working go out. To work. Come back. Yeah, you just described the schedule of a man. Wake up, go to the gym, go to work. Go to work, come back. And, you know, the usual single life, you put your feet up, you eat, and then do it all again no, tomorrow. I mean, but when you got married before you had a baby, yeah. what did you do then? Same, because we were working different... Uh, so he was doing shift work. Oh, see, so both. Yeah, so he was doing shift work, and I was the corporate nine to five. So there's days where I'm going to work in the morning and he's not there, or I'll come home and he's not there. Um, Who was cooking? Was, you was cooking uh, still? Me, yeah. I was cooking. But that's what I mean. You didn't say anything. You just made it sound yeah. as I got up and I done my stuff <laughs> yeah, and I went cooking. to work no, and I come home. Yeah. And I was thinking, at what time did you wake up and start cooking for your husband? Because it just sounds like no, you I would just come home separate from lives. Work. I would come home from work and on the weekends I would meal prep. So, you know, us Somalis, we like to have like our, you know, um, our big lambs and chickens mm -hmm. and stuff. So I'd cook that on the weekend, freeze it in like little pouches so i know monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday hey, this is like what that. we're having mm -hmm. um and so then all i've got to do is the rice Good. and the pasta or whatever yeah. it is um the and he would always come home and there's always food that's really the best way to go genuinely if you want to meal prep simply meal prep the proteins be it the beef be it the chicken be it the fish and then you just have to prepare fresh carbs it's very very easy even he's finished at 11 or whatever i've got his plate everything done microwave his cup drink next to it everything just set up for him so when he comes home he nice. can just eat shower and come to bed um there were days where we 
would spend time together. So yeah. we'd end up coming home at the same time. And I, we would both make it our duty to spend time together then mm-hmm. and, you know, cook together, sit down and eat. Because, you know, the, you, we're still in our honeymoon period, you know, we're still getting, we're, we're happy. Anyway, baby comes. <laughs> um, not long after COVID came. So I still kept up with those duties. And I essentially was a stay at home mum for a year for maternity Gosh. leave. So what that would look like is um, whenever he's getting up to go to work, I would make sure I, I have food ready for him. So his breakfast is ready. Um, at the time, you know, I've got a three month old, six month old, however old she was at the time. But I'd always make sure that he left with his stomach full and would come home and his stomach is full. Um, nice. So far, so good. We'd spend time together as a family when he comes home from work and then do it all again tomorrow. So, and I really enjoyed that part. And I actually got to be, you know, more feminine. I wasn't as stressed. Um, yes, absolutely. You know, when you come- what you see in the external world will influence your internal world. So if you do masculine things, as she said prior, wake up, go to the gym, go to work, then you become more masculine. But even if you feel more masculine as a woman, all you have to do is pursue more feminine things. And over time, it will recondition you and you will return to your femininity. To give you an extreme example, even as a man, if you start pursuing feminine things, you start painting your fingernails, you start putting on makeup, of course, you're going to become more feminine by default. Therefore, it is the duty of the woman to pursue feminine things. Cook for your husband, clean, etc. Home from work, you don't want to be... Was that in the year that you enjoyed? Now, the COVID year, did you enjoy? Because you, did, so you obviously didn't go out. You didn't go out to work during COVID. No, no, this was pre-COVID. Uh-huh. So 2019, so I had her in December 2018. Uh-huh. So from December 2018 to December 2019, just before COVID oh, hit, right. I was a stay-at-home mum and I loved it. You know, um, everything Amazing. was covered. It, it, you know, yeah. it was the ideal life for me. Mm-hmm. You know, I would make sure that his it is the ideal life for every woman. Clothes are clean. If they want I'm to understand it or him. not, like I'm trying to keep him as the man. Mm. And like when he comes home from work, yes. he's kind of you know, if I see that he's stressed out, I want to give him some of that some of my feminine energy because i had a lot to give at the time good um and try and make his day a little bit better as much as i could um can i ask you how you done that i'm just asking because sometimes men just want to come home and just be left alone when they're feeling miserable well, that's it that's it yeah. women tend to go try and like jump mm-hmm. and men don't want right. that. so i would gauge that like i'd see like if he wanted cuddles or you know i'll see i'll see him sitting on the sofa i'd go and sit on the sofa next to him and if he wants a cuddle, like he, like that's what, that's what the leading part of the men mm. that we don't really talk about. So he'd come over to me and lean over to me and I know that's my cue. You know, I'd, I'd go over to him. Like, if he sits still and he doesn't want me to, I know he's had a really bad time at work and me trying to cuddle up on him and all that. He's just like, men are built differently from us. They don't mm. want that. So I, I would just leave him to it, you know, I'd. Yes, that's correct. When you have a very hard job, the first thing you want to do generally is come home, take a shower, take a little bit of me time, and then after that, you want the attention of the wife. I'm let him have his space. Do do what you got to do. Yeah. Um, Would you have given up work to stay at home and be a housewife if my bills and everything was paid? Yeah, happily, because I really liked it. I really of did. Of course, you know, I what's spent not time to like? Baby, I've got it is the perfect life for a woman because it is natural, simple as that. It is very unnatural for a woman to go out and hunt for the food, so to speak. It is extremely unnatural for her to put herself at that risk. She is there for nurturing. She is there to make the home. And in this modern day environment, you're replicating exactly that. If you're going out as a woman to work, you're exposing yourself to danger. Of course, not as directly depending on the environment as back in the day if you would have hunted but nevertheless instinctively it is the same urge you are going out you are becoming a breadwinner you're going out you are becoming a hunter this is extremely unnatural for the woman this is why she loved to stay home to cook and take care of the children first steps Simple. i got to hear her first if i was at work and like you know in america i think you guys go back to work a lot sooner than that mm-hmm. i would have missed all of that and you don't know what's happening with your child. Like you said, you know, you want your kid to go to nursery when they can form sentences. I wish I had that because I, I was really anxious. She was, she was what, uh, well, COVID hit. So she was still at home with me. But I think she was really two years old when she went to nursery. 
Because some kids, that's old, you know that. I know, but for it's me, that's young. So, for baby. me, that's early. So, um, would you have gone down and left? Yeah, of course, it's your baby. It's absolutely unnecessary to do that. Ultimately, children should grow up with their family members. In an ideal society, they would grow up with their parents, with their uncles, and with their grandparents, of course. This is the social environment that they truly need. Moreover, your friends, your cousins, they would have children. And this would be the natural kindergarten, the natural nursery, if you will. In this day and age, it's absolutely unnatural what people do. It's sickening if you really look at it. They call it sleep training. They already remove the baby from them, put the baby in their own room and let it suffer for weeks. Let it cry it out and it's going to be just fine. Of course not. This is a trauma for the baby. Naturally, the baby clings on to the mother and needs to be with the mother. It gives the baby natural protection because yet again, in a natural environment, do you really believe you would take the baby and let it sleep alone somewhere in the wild? Of course not. What if a big animal appears this baby would be left alone this baby would die therefore it's only natural to sleep with the baby and the same applies of course of taking your baby and giving it away to foreign people to some people that you don't really know god knows what could happen and this is how we create the perfect slaves of course this is what the system wants take your babies remove them from the families put them into an institution then later on they get to school university job etc etc and the old people end up in the nursing home. Congratulations, mission accomplished, the family is destroyed. Lifestyle in order to attain that. So maybe like move to, I don't know, a, a house or an apartment yeah. half the size. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because we lived in a really small place. Mm -hmm. And then when I got pregnant, we moved oh, to a bigger place. Mm -hmm. So if it meant that I could still stay at home and you know, Would you have stayed in a smaller place? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. No problem at all. I mean, me talking about earlier, you know, having maids and all, that's, Did you for me, that's a dream, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, and um, that's what my, my parents mm -hmm. have and mm. the, the kind of life that I came from. But it's not the life that I had with him because mm. I think I was kind of not only battling with age, but also thinking, you know, it, you know, in Muslim girls, we get married young. Mm -hmm. mm. And How old were you when you got married? 28. Wow. 29. So that's, mm -hmm. you know. That's hard for a man. No, because I mean, like, a bit old. you've been in the career since you were 16. That's mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. 12 years of doing what you like and working yeah. your own. Yeah, yeah, Do you yeah, know what I mean? Me. Yeah. And then to come in. Wow. Yeah, so that, you know. Deserve there deserve medals used to. There was, <laughs> there was a lot that I had to change. And I think that's what. Um, See that? Just pointing out. I see career woman. You see career woman. <laughs> career woman. <laughs> All right, guys, and this is already it for today's clip. Very short, and I have to say we got clickbaited here because I don't understand how this is the woman that every man needs. Nevertheless, the points that she addressed are valid and important, of course, for this day and age to reflect upon because people truly forgot what it means to be natural human beings. They forgot what it means to be a man, what it means to be a woman. This life is a duality of sorts, a life of polar opposites. Opposites, male and female, black and white, etc., etc. The point of the story, however, is those opposites always want to complement each other. If a man is truly masculine, he wants a truly feminine woman. And those two different energies complement each other. However, if the man becomes more feminine, then the female automatically becomes more male. And out of a sudden, the man is not attracted to the female any longer. And the female is not attracted to the male any longer because they change their energies. This is extremely important to understand. You can only have a functioning relationship as long as the man is masculine and the female is feminine. Wow, big surprise. I know, quite the shocker, but nowadays people really have to reflect upon this and understand what it means to be male and what it means to be female. I always like to give the example of a little island. If it does not work on a little island, it won't work in your everyday life either. Think about it. You're left on a lonely island and now the men start behaving like women. They put on dresses, they put on makeup and they pretend they are women. The next step is they have with each other and they leave the women alone. What will happen with this island in a matter of a generation? 
obviously those people will die out. That was an extreme example, but think about a lighter one. The men simply don't want to hunt. What will happen? They have no food. They will die out. Let's say the women, they muster up their courage and they go hunting. Now you see an energy shift again. The females become more masculine and the males are more feminine. Now the women go out hunting. Maybe they will catch something small. However, in return, now they're not attracted to the males anymore because they understand they don't need them. They don't need them for protection. They don't need them for food. And if they don't need them for protection and for food, they don't need them for sex either. Because sex naturally is not only for pleasure. If you look into science, you will see that the scientists will tell you, oh, we're the only animal that has sex for pleasure. Yeah, great. We eat for pleasure as well. And then we become fat. That is not the purpose of eating. The purpose of eating is is to nourish your body. The purpose of sex is to create babies. But the purpose of the woman is to screen the environment and see which man is strong and will give her strong offspring. Yes, that is what it is. So now if the men are not hunting, then the woman won't have babies with them. So yet again, you understand on this small island example, you can understand what is natural and what is not. If it doesn't work there, it doesn't work in our modern times either. And this is why females are not attracted to men, because the men are not the breadwinners anymore. They don't go out and bring back the meat, so to speak. Even if they go to a job, who cares? Because that job doesn't pay good anymore. So therefore, the woman has to work. And working for the woman will always put her in this unnatural environment where she believes that she is the man. Once the woman believes that she is the men, the man becomes obsolete, and yet again, the family is destroyed. All right, guys, but this is it for today's video. If you liked it, leave the thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. On that note, guys, let me know in the comment section as well if you want me to react to more videos like this. And guys, as always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.